One of the most enduring things is always an origin story. Frequently I'm talking with visitors out at the Cabrillo statue. That statue's nice. But then to be able to look down from the statue and watch the San Salvador under sail passing right before us just adds that one more element. So that origin story for us was something that would allow our institution to distinguish itself in its community and, and play a vital role and, and connect in this great partnership we have with Cabrillo National Monument, which is also engaged in telling that story. The story is the discovery of California by Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo in 1542. One can only imagine Spanish galleons appearing on the horizon. Indigenous peoples made an effort to document their arrival. The universe had changed. I consider the Maritime Museum and Cabrillo National Monument to be sister institutions. They've gone through great effort to build a boat that Cabrillo would recognize. The new San Salvador represents a reopening of the first chapter in modern San Diego. Its construction is the result of the intellectual passion for discovery. For four years, the San Diego Maritime Museum enlisted a collection of trained craftsmen and volunteers, all who shared the common dream a fulfilling and unusually long-term project. One that would help define not only a museum, but a community as well. A new window into California history. It was, it was a very scary thing to do, and maybe it was just bad judgment to do. It certainly looked that way during the middle of it, <laughs> you know. But now that we've done it, it, it actually seems to have achieved its purpose. Uh, we have um, gained the attention and the, the affection of our community for doing it. Even if you're from the Midwest and you don't get to see the ocean very often, you do have the background. And for people that are familiar with the marine environment, who may in fact be sailors themselves, it adds their knowledge because it's one thing to go sailing uh, on a modern vessel with all the electronics and the sophisticated sailing gear. To go back to 1542, again, sets the context for what you're going to do the next time you go on your own sailboat. It just plugs in the opportunity to, to learn and be self-educated in a way that goes far beyond what any talking head or any book could do. Imagine going out of our solar system. I mean, we think the physics is going to be the same, it probably will be, but everything else is going to be different. I went to it when I was in third grade, actually. Uh, my third grade class went there, and I was awestruck by it. I still think it's one of the most beautiful pieces of property in the world. Well, we're literally where the land and the sea meet. And we also have the geographic advantage of being semi-isolated. There's only one road in and one road out. And you're looking at a place in which history has unfolded and is still unfolding. The 
the ecology you see is very similar to what Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo would have seen in 1542. Part of the mission of the Park Service is to preserve examples of the native ecology. The ecology that, that covers the hills and the bluffs would be called the coastal sage slash scrub that has evolved to survive in a semi-arid environment. In addition to just the climate and the geography, there's the connection with the sea. Every time I look at the tide pools from up on the bluffs, I think of here's where the land and sea come together. Now that gives you a very special relationship with one of the prime forces on Earth, the power of the oceans. The bond that exists between us and the Maritime Museum works on many different levels. What I get at it personally is insight into the world of a sailor. There's no way I can talk about Cabrillo and not bring in the maritime experience. There's a line of poetry I've always been taken with, and uh, it runs something like this, that ships are the closest things to dreams that hands have ever made. The age of exploration is, is really fascinating because we're not gonna have an experience like that again until we go into outer space. The gift that's being presented by the San Salvador is it gives us other tools for learning. You think uh, perhaps what it might have been like, the scent of tar, the boat rocking back and forth, the smallness and tightness of everything. You're constantly in motion. Sister institutions like the Maritime Museum add so much to us trying to tell our story. The kinetic, the visual, the being able to go on an actual vessel of that size in that period just tremendously increases the amount of learning that's there. The return of the San Salvador to the waters of San Diego brings the sensations of the past. To feel the wind and the water, and an image of centuries ago. But it all comes with an even greater takeaway, a greater perspective. We live at a time in which history is either misstated or completely ignored. That's at our peril for our future. By understanding the motivation and the struggles and triumphs of other people in other times in other places, that makes you better prepared to live well, to understand your present, and to make an educated guess as to what the future might be. And I think also what's particularly important this time when we live in 24-hour news cycles, and the world changes really fast, and there's a new technology every five minutes, it seems, the whole world seems to start to come apart and lose its cohesion. And the thing that gives it the cohesion and gives it back are those stories that we interweave ourselves with. And you can't do that without history. You can't do that without knowing those stories and having them available to you. By coming to a museum, and learning one little piece of knowledge, you're empowering yourself. It may not change the world, but you gotta start with yourself. Learning something and being able to use what you learn gives you a sense of a little bit more control over yourself and your life, what you know. If you will do that, the consequences will take care of themselves, as will the benefits. We are a community. We need to not be passive, but we also need to educate ourselves into what we do, what we say, and examine our opinions. Places like the Maritime Museum, watching the San Salvador sail by, all fits together. It can all teach people from different directions something they didn't know when they got up that morning. And after that, it goes back to them what you do with it.